Lauren Wesley Wilson is the visionary founder and CEO of Colorcom, a business that's empowering women of color in the workforce. Now she's expanding her vision in the new book, What Do You Need? Please welcome <laughs> Lauren Wesley Wilson. <laughs> so you spent 13 years building this community to champion and guide professional women who look like us. And now you've written this book to t and I need you to say, what inspired you to, to write it and the title? The title? Yes. It's getting people's attention. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I decided to write this book called What Do You Need? Because I want women to start asking the question of ourselves mm -hmm. and to others, what do you need? How often do we go in the workplace and we don't even ask ourselves what do we need to be mm -hmm. successful there? So there are several things that we need to excel in the workplace. We need to be seen, valued, respected, mm. heard and understood, mm -hmm. and most importantly, compensated yeah. for us to do our best work yes. mm -hmm. and for us to not quiet quit. Mm -hmm. Compensated, I like the sound of that. <laughs> um, now you're speaking from personal experience, right? You've right. been fired, mm -hmm. so have I. Um, you've been the first and only woman of color at your workplace, mm -hmm. check. You've been a successful entrepreneur, yes. You say it's not enough to just be good at your job. Why is it not just enough just to be good mm -hmm. at your job? Mm. We have to participate in the culture. Mm. I'm not saying assimilate, I'm saying participate. Mm -hmm. mm. So when I got fired from my first job, one of the things that they told me that I was not a good culture fit. Oh, which yes. is Spanish for what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it essentially is saying you, you don't belong here and why? And years later, I realized, did I participate in the culture? When all the branches were extended to me, I remember there was one instance that I talk about in my book when I got extended and invited to an ice hockey game by my coworkers. Yeah. And I turned them down and I said, you know what? I'm not really that interested in ice hockey. Oh, I'm not going to go. And what I missed out on was an opportunity to get to know my coworkers outside of when decisions were being made. It's like mm. networking. Yeah. Networking with your yeah. coworkers. Yeah, with your coworkers. You, you have to participate yeah. in the culture if you want to advance. Mm -hmm. Employers and leaders, they don't want people just coming to work, checking the box and going home. Yeah. They want people involved, engaged, and excited to work there. That's right. Mm. Uh, you yeah. also, when it, you say when it comes to climbing the corporate ladder, you say that you should seek out a godmother or a godfather, not Al Pacino. <laughs> But, Not Al Pacino. I mean, uh, or a rabbi. We used to call them a rabbi. Find yes. your rabbi who, who will basically give you, like, protect you a little bit. Absolutely. So that's for the advance. So we know about mentors who help you in your day-to-day -day career. Mm -hmm. We are learning about sponsors who help advocate for you yeah. about opportunities when you're not in the room. Godmothers and godfathers, they're the cream of the crop. They're the ones you can pick up the phone and they can expedite your career and save you 10 years off your professional journey. But well, how do you get them to do that? They yeah. may be not interested to help you. Well, first you have to develop the relationship, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it starts with mm -hmm. being involved. It starts with joining organizations, mm -hmm. being on boards, being on committees, having a reason to even reach out to these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you want to provide maybe a potential opportunity for them and in turn they can help you. Now this is something that takes years to cultivate. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that's going to happen overnight. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're you're probably a spot, godmother to some You can actors. spot, mm -hmm. spot mm -hmm. the one who has a heart. Yeah. yeah. Spot that one. And that Absolutely. has the they political capital you. and will spend it on you. But yeah. it does take a, a good point. Time. Yeah. No, and I was saying we have a lot of young actors on the show who could tell C. Whoopi as a godmother because she's invested yeah. in them and they first invest in you mm -hmm. and sought out your help. So yeah. it's so important. So you say something interesting in this book. You debunk the idea that you need to bring your whole self to work. Mm -hmm. Yes. I very much agree with this. Explain it. <laughs> so we've been hearing for years bring your full self to work. Everybody says, bring your full self to work. We should be bringing the best parts of ourselves mm -hmm. to work initially mm -hmm. because we need to be able to connect with our coworkers on shared interests, on books, on movies, on television mm. shows. When we, when we hear the term bring your full self to work, people think that means everything. Drama, relationship issues, your divorce. Yeah, I mean, mess, we don't need, yeah, the messy. mess, we don't need to hear the mess. Over time, your coworkers will begin to learn about your life moments, but you don't want to bring that to the table to mm. start. Completely agree. So earlier in the show, we were talking about, uh, in Hot Topics, about a woman going viral on TikTok because she didn't have makeup yeah. on and she was turned down for a job. We know that appearance is very important in this society, mm -hmm. that ba even babies are more loved when they're pretty, which is really sick. It mm -hmm. is. But, uh, and certainly what you look like in the, in the workplace has a lot to do with your success. It just happens to be a fact. And so this woman mm -hmm. went to work, even though completely prepared, without makeup, yes. and she didn't get the job. 
What yeah. do you think about that? Well, I think a lot of things about that. I mean, <laughs> I, I could be stepping in. To, but, so what I think about that is this. So I interview a lot of people, and so I think that during the interview process, we have to bring our Sunday's best. Mm -hmm. So we really need to go look at the environment that we're trying to get that job. How does everyone around us look? We need, so if the environment calls to be more dressed up, we might want to step it up. So if it you calls think to, she should have worn makeup? Well... <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I, I, if everybody else makeup is wouldn't have hurt. It. it wouldn't have hurt. Why, yeah. I know that you don't typically do it. Why? Why start for that? Maybe you should start for that day. Uh huh. If okay. you want the job and everyone around you tends to be it wearing makeup, no, no one says you have to be in full glam, but maybe that would have helped. A little blush couldn't hurt. A lipstick. It couldn't help. But it maybe that hurt. wasn't her. <laughs> yeah. yeah maybe. And, and, and I, I think a lot of people want the job. Well, but I think a lo I think we have to re-teach people that it isn't what we look like here mm -hmm. because oftentimes we would never get the job mm -hmm. because of what we look Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, well, so... I told you I didn't get a job also because of my yeah. hair. So mm -hmm. it, it applies to It's a fine line. You, you want to be authentic to yourself. Yeah. And yeah. as yeah. you mentioned, with yeah. you don't wear makeup and yeah. you come in as yourself. So it's a fine line. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I'm dressed yeah. to the nines when I need to be. <laughs> right. Exactly. Or exactly. to the sevens. <laughs> don't let me lie. <laughs> well, today, diversity, equity, and inclusion program are, are being gutted all across the country. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've seen that. What, what kind of impact do you see that having on a, a macro level? Um, and, and how can we all make sure women of color find their seat at the table despite the cutting of all of these programs? We need to repackage what DEI means. Mm -hmm. DEI is about understanding difference at its core. Mm -hmm. It is essential as a business imperative, because if we understand difference, we can better work together. Mm -hmm. We're more productive, we're meeting business objectives. If there's conflict in the workplace, we are not meeting business needs and objectives. If Bob said something to me two weeks ago and I'm holding on to that, and I'm now not meeting those deadlines, I am slowing down the workforce where I work. Hmm. We really need to understand difference to be able to work together and meet the needs of the company. Can I bring something up? Yeah. Because it occurs to me that you know when we talk about D DEI. 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 Yeah. That we have to re we have to remind people, particularly women, <coughs> you are part of DEI. Yes. Mm -hmm. What regardless of what color you are, you are part of that mm -hmm. because there was no room for you here. Mm -hmm. So when they're talking about getting rid of these programs, they're talking about getting rid of your programs as well. It's women. not we women. women yeah. You know and. You have to keep that in mind in order to understand what's being done. Right. Because if they're killing off, <laughs> trying to kill us off by saying, you know, it's not important, mm -hmm. they can't get stuff that they can't have kids without us. Yeah. I mean, you can't. Yeah. You but have, we, to, you have we, to have a But we can have kids without them. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes? Oh, so you want me to say this? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's been great. It's wonderful. And you, and you have to come back because this is information people need to have. The new book is called What Do You Need? It's available now. And guess what, y'all? You all are so lucky. That's right. You each and every one of you getting a copy of this book today. That's right. So you can help figure out what you need.